Unfortunately, how far away this future is depends very much on you know, how quickly we can build it. It's not going to just evolve and happen. It has to be built. And uh, you know, if you look at the sort of the various futures being projected out there, they all have a similar flavor. Right? This is Cisco's the Internet of Everything, where you know everything is connected, and uh, you know your your alarm clock can ring you t ten minutes earlier if there's heavy traffic. Right? That sort of uh, kind of future where technology is sort of enabling us to live um, happier, healthier, and more effective lives. Right? So what, if this is the future, I mean, I, I don't think there's a lot, uh, much disagreement uh, around that sort of a future. You know, Microsoft also has something similar. So, so what do we need? And I think uh, uh, the discussion in the masterclass to, today um, identified it very clearly, and, th and that is leadership, all right? But what, what does leadership really look like and what, uh, what's underlying it? And I guess um, I want to convince you that there, there are at least four critical dimensions, all right? There's the, the technical skills, all right? And that sort of competency. Uh, then, you know, an understanding of management and, and business, all right? You know, because um, there's no point really having these technical skills if you can't actually make a business work better. And then there's the creativity and the innovation side. So if IT professionals are gonna be helping organizations be more successful, then the key is obviously innovation, yeah? But um, innovation is pretty hard if uh, creativity isn't valued. And, you know, we hear um, that, you know, schools uh, essentially beat the creativity out of everybody. Uh, now, I know that's not true. But uh, what are we doing in schools to um, cultivate creativity in our students? It, it, it's really probably the most critical thing. And then, you know, you need the vision. You need those entrepreneurial skills uh, to, to take risks, to have a go, and to want to change the world. And I think um, this is something that um, students want to do. I mean, they're, they're young, they don't know how hard it is to change the world, so they want to change it. Um, and what do industry want? Well, they really want the soft skills, communication, collaboration, and uh, problem solving. So, you know, they want everything without any investment whatsoever. Uh, the skills gap. So the future job, you know, um, Niels Bohr, a very famous Danish scientist, Nobel Prize winner, said prediction is very difficult, especially if it's about the future. And when you first read this, you think, well, is there any other kind of prediction? And there is. I mean, there's a very interesting concept called predicting now. That is, what is happening right now? It's a kind of prediction, um, and it's something that Google has exploited very well, right? You know, when they do their sort of predictive text and trying to guess what you're looking for now, mm -hmm. right? And they fill it in. That's a good example of predicting now. So the future, wow, where are they going to be? Uh, kids starting kindergarten. Uh, what kind of jobs are they going to be doing? Well, there's um, the. Harvard Business School has identified data scientists, okay? And uh, data scientists are naming their own price in Silicon Valley right now. And because data is growing like uh, mad, uh, it doesn't look like these jobs are going to go away. But what is a data scientist? It's not a statistician, okay? It's a person who understands the business goals, knows a bit of statistics, but can also program and bring data from different sources and uh, put it together in interesting and novel ways. So um, I think you saw a little bit about uh, big data in the previous talk, but you know, this is a slide that made me uh, rethink big data, because I, I feel like I'm the, like the, the slowly cooked frog in the pot, uh, you know, been working with data for a very long time. It was when I saw this slide, I suddenly realized, no, this is a step change. It's not just industry hype. There's something pretty interesting going on here. And, um, you know, this is where IBM is saying uh, where we are today. So you can see that that growth is just unbelievable. And that's just from 2010. Okay, so we have to prepare um, our students for this kind of a future, a data-rich future, a future where they're advantaged 
and their organization is advantaged if they're able to, one, make sense of a lot of data and use it to build evidence for better decision making. So in the future, well, in the past, you know, we've had uh, people, decision makers, managers, and CEOs who've really gone on their intuition because the data wasn't available, right? And some were successful and, and others weren't. Well, they were successful for a time, but, you know, um, maybe not for their entire career. So uh, in a brave new world, um, data is, is, is going to be very helpful. If you have skills to manage it, you're going to be totally and utterly enabled. Uh, okay, I'm going to start moving a bit quicker now. Um, so this is, um, I don't know if that's showing up. Oh, that's, looks, that's not too bad. Uh, this is um, Cisco's uh, working with um, <coughs> MIT researchers, okay, uh, trying to assess how ready countries are for the Internet of Things or that future, all right? And you can see Australia is like way down the bottom uh, with Mexico and and Russia, and well below, you know, the BRIC countries who are accelerating and investing in science and and infrastructure. Um, and you know, the scenario is looking like you know we are going to be left uh, well behind if we don't rapidly start encouraging students to, to study uh, computing and, and ICT and seeing it in a in a much broader context of the business environment. Okay, so. That's kind of a reality. This is where we are today. I mean, do we want to keep on thinking, or do we need to find new ways of getting up this uh, ladder? So on the skills gap, I'm going to quickly uh, go through this. On the te technical side, I mean, we need uh, people who um, understand the technical aspects of, of communicating uh, and also enabling people to access data, to build mashups, to bring data together from disparate sources, data that's very large data that's moving very quickly, all right? And, um, you know, the social and mobile dimensions, uh, these will dominate, and they're already beginning to. But I'm delighted by that, because I think this is, uh, makes uh, computing a lot more attractive to, to, to young women, because we're social creatures, and uh, this is helpful. We really have the edge here, because I think, um, you know, it could be said that, you know, the, the, the guys, you know, many of them just like technology for technology's sake and they, they're, they're, they're just passionate about the technology and therefore they do interesting things just on intuition, but they never, not never, but hardly think about, you know, what, what's, the, what's the purpose? They don't care. They're just having fun playing, right? But girls tend to want to have a purpose and I think the social aspects are a very strong motivator. So um, the, the different aspects of big data uh, that I mentioned, that is huge volumes, moving quickly uh, from a variety of sources. Uh, you know, consider uh, a profile, prof, profile database, right? Just sort of lines on a table together with the network graph of friends. How do you bring that together? Uh, there are some very big challenges there. And then things themselves, okay? We're seeing big transformations. Uh, you know, cloud technologies, and certainly robots are in, up there. Uh, the management skills, I'm just going to skip through these, only to say, really, really important. Uh, and then these, the innovation skills, all right? So being able to design using data as the evidence to help make those design choices, okay? So using data to drive design, okay, is um, going to be particularly useful. Uh, and then having the vision, like where are we going? What are we actually trying to do? Uh, how do you develop these skills? I think it's, it's very unclear, but uh, I think we, we have to try things. And creating opportunities where students can actually demonstrate or um, at least identify the kinds of things they need uh, to learn. So um, I have a position at Stanford, and one of the, the um, exciting or lucky things that happened to me is I spent six months there, and I had to take my son with me. He was in year five, and uh, he was he, he became involved in something in, in the classroom. It was normal, something called BizWorld, 
And this is where uh, year five students were put into small groups and they had to start a business. And the year fours were given sort of uh, play money and uh, then on, the, uh, on a particular day, they, the year five businesses had to sell their wares and the year fours had to purchase them at the end of the day. They valued the company uh, on, in terms of its um, shareholder value and profitability, etc. So, you know, this is California, uh, and this is what they do with year five. So I think we need to be doing a lot more of this kind of stuff uh, in Australian schools. Uh, my son, he was vice president sales in year five. Now, um, robots, time to talk to, about robots. And here they are listed as one of the um, most important disruptive technologies, okay? And here, here they are in the form of um, advanced robotics, okay? But a, a car that can drive itself is, is absolutely a robot. And of course, these things can be in the cloud. They're also part of the Internet of Things. So robots uh, can certainly be in any of these sorts of areas. So when you consider that, uh, then I think um, you begin to see their, their potential. And uh, Cisco came up with this and they, they actually put a dollar value on these things. So it's, altogether it's maybe $30 billion by 2020. So it's big biggies. Now, uh, so robots will transform our lives, business and the global econ economy eventually, right? It's just a question of how long it's gonna take. And the main reason is that robots can do physical work. So they're like a computer, okay, that could or, or not be on the internet. Look how that, the, you know, the personal computer has transformed our lives and business. Look how the internet has done so. What if these things could actually do real physical work? So, and we're beginning to see these sorts of things. Now, um, I just wanted to share this with you. This is Pet Man. So, this is a robot. And he's a military robot, but this is state of the art. Now, he's, he's got some sort of things. They're not holding him up. They're just there in case he falls down because he's a multi-million dollar robot. Okay. So, um, yeah, what can't this robot do? All right, this is today already. So, they're a disruptive technology that is, is really coming very, very soon. 